Hi folks, today we're going to talk about new ASIC models, the Ant Miner S17 and particularly S17 Pro version that we have here. We will go through its real characteristics, consumption, performance, compare it with previous Ant Miner models and leave our thoughts about the relevance of using it in immersion cooling systems. So, let's start with the most obvious stuff, construction details of the device itself. As you may see, the construction of S17 is very similar to the previous Antminer S15 model. However, it looks more massive and more powerful. It has a built-in power supply with two connectors for connecting to the electrical network. It also has four fans, two on each side, unlike S15, which as we remember had only two fans on one side. Now, to the specifications stated by the manufacturer. This device has three operating modes – low power, normal and turbo mode. In energy saving mode, we have a range of 36 to 48 terahashes per second with the power consumption of 12, 96, 17, 28 watts. In normal mode, we got 53 terahashes per second with the consumption of 20, 94 watts. In turbo mode, we will be able to squeeze out 53 to 62 terahashes per second from the device while consuming 2385-2790 watts. The chip production technology is 7 nanometers. The noise level is 82 decibels. We will check all these specifications stated by the manufacturer within real operating conditions a bit later. The device is prepared for work and now we are ready to observe its real characteristics in all three modes, starting with low power mode. Also, in turbo mode we will measure the noise level and compare it with the one that is stated by the manufacturer. Turning it on. So, the device is on and we are ready to see its real characteristics – hash rate and power consumption. Just to remind you, the device is currently operating in power saving mode. See, there is a tick. In the minor status tab we see the hash rate. That is, the average hash rate is about 42.5 terahashes per second with power consumption of 1585 watts. Now we will switch the ASIC to the normal mode and check its parameters. ASIC is switched to the normal mode, so we are looking at the performance, which is about 54.6 terahashes per second. This is the average level. The power consumption at this level is 22.31 watts. Now, let's switch the ASIC to the third turbo mode and check the parameters. So, the S17 is now operating in turbo mode, which is the most powerful one. Let's check the hash rate and power consumption from the outlet. We have 57.2 terahashes per second. The power consumption from the outlet is 2503 watts. As we said at the beginning, we are going to measure the noise level and compare it with the one that is stated by the manufacturer. The noise level is about 65 decibels, which is great, as it is even lower than was officially stated. Let me remind you that Bitmain claimed 85 decibels, but it is also should be noted that the ambient air temperature here is about 20 degrees. We have gathered all the data required for calculating the payback period of the S17 Pro and compare it with other models. In order to calculate the payback period, we will use the Bixbit calculator, 
which can be accessed from our website. We go to the calculator, leaving Essex in the type of devices. The default algorithm chosen is SHA256, which is the one we need. And now we will put the numbers we have received during our test. We will start with the S17 Pro in power saving mode, in which we have achieved a performance of 42.5 THz per second with a consumption of 15.85 W. In the cost of electricity, we will put 4 cents per kilowatt hour. What do we get? When mining Bitcoin SV, we get 15.2 dollars and while mining Bitcoin it is $13.5 per day. Apparently, Bitcoin SV has been pumped up, so it is the first in our yield. Going on to the normal mode, where we had 54.6 terahashes per second with the consumption of 22.31 watts. What do we get? Mining Bitcoin SV brings 19.3 dollars and if mining Bitcoin it is 17.2 per day. Next is the turbo mode, 57.2 terahashes per second with the consumption of 25.03 watts. Mining Bitcoin SV brings 20.1 dollars or in case of mining Bitcoin it is 17.9 dollars per day. Now we will proceed to the payback period of previous antminer models. These are S15 and S9J overclocked in immersion cooling system. By the way, the link to the video review on S15 and S9J immersed will be in the description. We will start with S15. As we remember, the S15 also has two operating modes, power saving and maximum performance mode. In power saving mode, S15 had 17.9 terahashes per second and power consumption of 907 watts. So, when mining Bitcoin SV, we get 6.1 dollars and if mining Bitcoin it is 5.4 dollars per day. As for the maximum performance mode, we have 28 terahashes per second with a power consumption of 1684 watts. What do we get? If mining Bitcoin SV, we get 9.3 dollars and if mining Bitcoin it is 8.3 dollars per day. As for the S9J, we consider it in the immersion cooling system and overclocked above 20 terahashes per second, 20.4 with a consumption of 2010 watts to be exactly. When comparing payback periods, I will let myself leap ahead and say that in this comparison, besides taking into account the cost of the ASIC itself, we must add the cost of one ASIC slot in the immersion cooling system and, of course, add the cost of a more capable power supply, which will allow to overclock the ASIC above 20 terahashes per second. That is just to keep in mind. So, what the calculator shows us? When mining Bitcoin SV, at the moment we get 6 dollars per day while mining Bitcoin will bring us 5.3 dollars per day. This is for ASIC S9J that is immersed and overclocked. Before we calculate the payback period in months, I would like to talk a bit on the matter of using new miners in immersion cooling systems and its relevance. We are in our lab where the S17 Pro is already immersed in the cell along with S15 and T15 models. New miners work absolutely fine in immersion liquid. We get rid of all the fans, noise and dust. By immersing the equipment into the immersion liquid, we extend a lifespan of devices. One of the main features of immersion cooling is ensuring the operability of mining equipment in conditions of high ambient temperatures, meaning areas with hot climate. 
In the short term, there is a possibility of increasing the hash rate by means of overclocking, which is a big plus of immersion cooling. On that basis, it is safe to say that applying immersion cooling systems to the new line of miners is quite relevant and even mandatory in some cases. Well, we calculated the payback period for each of our devices. These are S17 Pro, S15 and S9J overclocked in immersion cooling system. The results of the calculations are presented in the table. Based on these calculations, it can be concluded that, due to the high and unreasonable cost of new devices, S9J immersed and overclocked still remains relevant and profitable solution for mining. That's all for today. If you have any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.